Okay, so Pi News episode 43, and as usual, I'm using my 4 gig Pi 4, and I'm using Twister OS to do this. Okay, so first up, I did a video recently, Raspberry Pi OS had a big update. Uh, it got updated from Debian 10 to Debian 11, um, but loads of things seem to be broken. Uh, I tried the 64-bit and the 32-bit version, and uh, I found the 32-bit version worked pretty well for me, but I don't do a lot of maker stuff on my Pi, and it seems to be the people who are using uh, things like GPIO pins and all the maker side of it are having quite a lot of problems, and quite a lot of people are having problems on the lower power devices. Now, to be fair, a lot of my videos, I did switch back to uh, the Buster version, which is Debian 10, and uh, I found that that's worked really well for me. But one thing you'll find, if you go into Raspberry Pi Imager, so if I launch Imager, and click on that. If you choose an OS, uh, it will default to the version that came out on the 30th of October, uh, which is the bullseye version, so the, the more buggy version. Uh, now, if we click on other images, it also shows the latest version. I think maybe the Raspberry Pi Foundation should give you an option to download the older version. It might be in here and I've missed it, but I, I had to look through it and I couldn't find it. So at the end of the video, I'll show you how you can use the older version. Now, I think this is less of an issue on something like a Raspberry Pi. If it was a Windows computer or a Mac or even an Android device uh, and you did a major update and uh, that update really wasn't as good, didn't perform as well, definitely wasn't as compatible with certain programs and devices, major problem. But on a Raspberry Pi, we can just switch to a different storage medium. So I can just put another SD card in the slot or a USB device and be up and running. So really with new operating systems, I would say you're always better off to wait if it's something you rely on. Like my Twister OS, I haven't changed anything on this. There isn't a Debian 11 version of this at this stage, but I'm sure there will be in the future, but certainly not for a little bit. So if we close this page down, uh, you'll see that Tom's Hardware did a story on it. Raspberry Pi Bullseye OS tested, you may want to wait. Does the latest Raspberry Pi OS miss the mark? What does Bullseye bring to the table in 2021? There aren't many noticeable improvements in the UI, but under the hood there have been a few changes for better and worse. Unfortunately, the new OS breaks compatibility with some hats and libraries, potentially rendering some existing projects and products useless until developers have had time to update their software. So there's a link to a forum thread in this. I'll put a link to this story, um, but you can see that if, if Tom's Hardware has decided to do a story on it, obviously there is a bit of an issue there. Uh, now, also the Raspberry Pi weekly issue, uh, you can see here, calling all Raspberry Pi camera users. Our big Raspberry Pi OS update last week has a significant, albeit temporary, impact on people who use cameras in their Raspberry Pi projects. Head to the lead story in this issue to find out everything you need to know. Uh, and so there's a link in there as well if you want to find out more about that. But I would definitely keep trying Bullseye out. Uh, I like the fact that it has the auto update and the updates are coming quite fast as well. So they're obviously trying to iron out all the problems, but it really, if you're using lots of attachments with your Pi, uh, if you're relying on it uh, to do something really important for you, just stay on the old system and experiment with the new operating system on a different storage medium. It's so easy to switch between operating systems on the Pi. I don't see it as being much of an issue at this stage. I understand if you've upgraded from 10 to 11, which they didn't really advise um, on, but I've seen guides about it, uh, then your whole operating system and everything you've done, all the customization, I could see why you'd be annoyed at that. But uh, really in the future, it's always best with the brand new operating system just to have uh, that old backup because it's so much easier on the Pi than anything else. But as I say, I'll show you how to install the older version, the Buster version of Raspberry Pi OS, the 32-bit version, the very, very compatible version at the end of this video. So next up, I always like a handheld build. Uh, this is RetroPi Official on Facebook, and you can see here, used all my spare parts and a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W to build another Game Boy. The Raspberry Pi Zero 2W is just so good for games and as a portable device, because it uses so little power and, and it is a powerful device. Uh, so if we have a look at some of the close-ups, loads going on in there, all sorts of bits here, like around the micro USBs. Uh, yeah, very interesting, and then, you can see the outside of the build as well, looking very nice. Um, but if you want more details about that, if you're planning to do on something like that, there's loads of details about what was used, which I always like. So all the parts and everything are in here, the display and so on. 
Next up, thanks to Guido for letting me know about this. Uh, so Nico D, who is a big contributor to my channel, I get loads of comments and loads of information from him. He's released a video about this new operating system, Armbium Linux. I will have a look at it, but if you want to have a look at it now, I'll put a link to his video in my description. Uh, you can see here, there's, uh, what is it, 15 minutes worth of video, and uh, it does, some of the OS looks nice. I haven't actually properly watched the video yet. I just haven't had time. Um, but yeah, it looks like lots of details has gone. And it looks like there was, um, I did flick through it, there was some speed tests in here as well. So I wonder if he's comparing it and getting better results than other operating systems. As I say, I haven't read it yet. But you can see what the uh, taskbar looks like there and tests on uh, video editing as well, and some benchmarks, which I won't leave on the screen too long. So uh, next up, Arducam announces autofocus Raspberry Pi camera module, again from Tom's Hardware, crowdfunding soon. So 16 megapixel, I think it says it's a Sony one. Yeah, Sony uh, megapixel camera. Nice to see autofocus. The uh, I've got the Raspberry Pi official one, not the big one, uh, but it's just a fixed focus. And I did a photo test, I did a video uh, where I went out and compared it to my iPhone, I think, on the day. and. Um, it was okay, um, but uh, this with autofocus and a Sony lens uh, looks like, and a Sony sensor could be pretty decent. Oh look, it's the same sensor as the OnePlus 6 and 6T smartphones. And a few people got Cutie Pie, uh, which is a compute module for tablet. And uh, I thought this looked interesting because it was nice and slim. Uh, Compute Module 4 is a really nice platform. I don't think it's as compatible as the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, so there's so much content out for the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, and so something like the Raspad 3 is obviously a lot chunkier as a tablet. You can see that this is very, very slim. So I can see the merit on it. Um, as always with these tablets, they're not that cheap. Um, but yeah, you can see how the Compute Module 4 really fits into this. Uh, Jeff Gidding's done a teardown so you can see all the information inside and here goes some speed tests and various things. But again, I won't show all of that because uh, you can watch Jeff Gearing's video and read his blog. So if I switch to the official website, uh, 229 uh, is the price. They're sold out at the moment anyway. And I think that's without the Compute Module 4. I could be wrong. Although it does say Compute Module 4 2 gig in here. So have a read through that. And on that story, uh, developer ports Android 12 to the Raspberry Pi 4B. I did see this, um, and I think I mentioned it in a recent Pi News. Um, Consta Kang has updated to Android 12 for the Raspberry Pi 4, 400, and also Compute Module 4. And uh, if you go to Consta Kang's page, you can see it's mentioned in here. Uh, I've downloaded it, but I haven't had a long time to play around with it. I did show it a little bit in one of my videos. It was in my Linux video, Linux on Android video. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, they're always great builds. And obviously Android lends itself brilliantly to a tablet compared to a lot of desktop operating systems. I know there's some touch versions of desktop operating systems, but they still aren't like iPad OS or Android on a touchscreen. So last up from Adafruit, a tiny cluster based on four Raspberry Pi Zero 2Ws. So if you're seeing out of stock, this is one of the reasons why. Uh, only joking. This is uh, just looks really impressive. So you can see cluster hat here, uh, four Raspberry Pi 2 Zero Ws on top of a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, but uh, I'm not really into clusters, but uh, it just looked like a great image, so I thought I'd show it on Pi News. Link in the description if you want to know more about that story. Uh, and so, as I mentioned right at the start, uh, if you've been having trouble with the newest version of Raspberry Pi OS, and you want the older version, there's a link in the description, downloads.raspberrypi.org, and you can see there's all sorts of things in here. You can have older versions of Raspberry Pi Imager, you can download versions of Noobs, loads of stuff. Now, if we want Raspberry Pi OS, we've got ARM HF, which is the 32-bit version, the stable version, uh, and then we've got the beta version, which is ARM64. So if we click on that, you can see we've got images here, and we're looking for the older version. So it was the 8th of November was the version that came out bullseye. So this would be Buster. Now I've already downloaded it and that's why it's showing up as purple on here. And when you download it in your downloads folder, it comes up here. So Raspberry Pi OS, uh, so you can see there, uh, 7th of May instead of the 30th of October. So to use that version, you would need to unzip it. So we do extract here. I think we need to unzip it. I could be wrong. You might not need to unzip it. We'll find out in a minute, see what image it does with that. In fact, while that's unzipping, 
uh, if I press the Windows key and do Imager. And Raspberry Pi Imager is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So we need to choose OS and use custom. And you can see here, Raspberry Pi OS Buster. Oh yeah, so the zip file was there, so it would have done it with the zip file. You don't need to unpack it, it looks like. Well, let's give it a try. So Raspberry Pi OS Buster ARM HF is the one we want. And open. Choose storage. I'll use this 128 gig Samsung bar. Now, I'm using an SSD on this Pi at the moment, so I'm going to plug it into the USB 2 socket. It will take longer but two USB 3 devices in a Pi without a separate powered USB hub is probably not recommended. Uh, it's more likely to crash. Right, let's go back to screen capture. Okay, so you can see here, Samsung flash drivers come up and hit right and yes. Okay, so that's finished writing. So now we need to shut that down. Unplug the SSD drive, plug the Samsung bar into USB 3 because obviously we're going to get better speeds with that. Switch off and switch on. And now you have the most reliable, compatible and stable version of Raspberry Pi OS. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.